Good morning. Welcome to Union Congregational Church on this fifth Sunday of Lent, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week. We are very glad that you're with us today. Uh, So today we're going to be talking a lot about the raising of Lazarus, and, uh, and so we're, we're experiencing some sort of grief uh, language in our liturgy today, uh, but there is hope too, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a little while. But, um, but um, in order to have that hope that is present in the resurrection, sometimes we have to sit in, in grief and and um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Um, I actually don't think that I have significant announcements myself today, other than just a reminder that uh, this week's Lenten service, our, our, um, amazingly, our final Lenten service before we enter into Holy Week, um, is at um, Pilgrim UCC in Fond du Lac at 7 on, on Wednesday night. Uh, And then, of course, looking ahead, um, we have Palm Sunday next weekend, uh, and then we have Monday, Thursday, we have a soup supper that will be shared with us and the Waupun Methodist Church at 6 p.m., and then a 7 p.m. service between the two churches. I'm really excited to have Pastor Steve Miller over over at the Methodist Church joining me for that. And then we will go to the Methodist Church for Good Friday at noon. Any other announcements that we should be aware of today before we start worship? Okay. Um, Please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join me in the call to worship. Oh, people of God, hope in the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Let's pray the opening prayer. O God, who weeps with us, who sat. Amen. Uh, Please join in our opening hymn. This is number 451, Be Still My Soul.
You may be seated. But now I invite any young worshipers who are with us today to come and join me on the steps. <clears throat> Morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good? <laughs> Good to see you. So, today we're going to be talking a lot we're going to be talking about sadness, but we're also going to be talking about hope. Do you ever feel sad sometimes? Have you have you ever had somebody in your life die? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that so, sometimes that happens when when you know we're we're sometimes it happens when we're very old that we die after some time and sometimes um sometimes we get sick and we die um sometimes we get very you know very very sick um and we die but um there are you know there there are, and there are other reasons that that happens but but um what we're going to talk about today is how Jesus can bring us hope even in that sadness. Um, Jesus, in this story, Jesus uh, raised one of his friends. His friend died. And Jesus, uh, Jesus was able to raise him from the dead. Um, but, um, but there are many different ways that we can live on even after we die. Jesus, Jesus says, if you believe in me, you don't really die. You, 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 you live on even after you die. And, and, some, and uh, sometimes that's a little bit hard to understand, right? You know, you, you, you're, you're, either, you're either alive or you're not alive. But, in, but Jesus uh, tells us that there's something, something different going on there, that, 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 our, that our spirits, that our, that our memories, that the things that the, the, the pieces of us that there are pieces of us that live on uh, even after even after we die. So uh, even in even in times when we're sad, even when times when it's when it's difficult, uh, when when things happen to us, Jesus gives us the hope and the comfort that uh, that Jesus will be with us, and that the people the people we love will continue to to live in so, in sort of a mysterious way um and and that's something we can be hopeful in um, so how so yeah how about a prayer let's um let's pray together i will uh, i will say a short phrase and i invite you to to say it back to me dear god thank you for the ways you remind us that people we love live on through us. Help us share your love through those memories and through the people we love. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody. So uh, sometimes, um, when you when you talk to the pastor before before worship, and the pastor hasn't found a liturgist, you get voluntold really quickly. So um, thank you, Rick. <laughs> John eleven seventeen through 45. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple miles away, and many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said, Master, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus replied, your brother will be raised up. 
Martha replied, I know that he will be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. You don't have to wait for the end. I am right now, resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, The teacher is here and is asking for you. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not, entered, had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him. He said, Where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. The Jews said, Look how deeply he loved him. Others among them said, Well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Then Jesus, the anger again welling up within him, arrived at the tomb. It was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time there's a stench. He's been dead four days. Jesus looked her in the eye. Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Then to the others, Go ahead, take away the stone. <clears throat> they removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, Creator, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen, but on account of this crowd, standing here I've spoken so that they might believe that you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And he came out, a cadaver wrapped from head to toe and with a handkerchief over his face. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. That was a turning point for many of the Jews who were with Mary. They saw what Jesus did and believed in him, <clears throat> but some went back <coughs> to the Pharisees and told on Jesus. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> May God bless us as we learn from these holy words. Amen. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, normally, normally I'm up there and normally I have all my sermon written out. But today it sort of feels more, more important to me to speak from the heart. I'm not going to ramble on forever. I, I do have an outline in front of me, but, um, but I, I, feel like, I feel like it's a little bit more important this week to, to speak from the heart for a, a number of different reasons. Um, so, and I'll get into that in just a second, but first let's pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, as you can imagine, I've been thinking a lot about my cousin Keith this week. Uh, if you remember, I asked for prayers last week for our family because my cousin Keith was found last Thursday unresponsive by his teenage son and they weren't able to revive him. Um, that We had the funeral for him yesterday. And this story, in many ways, could speak to his faith and his life just as easily as, as any, anyone else, but it would sort of be too hard to talk about him this soon after his death. You know, we, we were told in seminary that you have to speak from your scars and not your wounds. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about Keith today, but I am going to talk about my friend Jack. So this is my friend Jack. He, he was a member of the Nina Church uh, when I was growing up. He, uh, he, he, he died when he was nine years old, um, but he, in, even in his short life, he had such a presence about him and an enthusiasm about him that, that so many people just latched right on to. Um, 
he, so, so many people got to, got to know him really well. Uh, and if you'll go to the next slide, um, how can you not melt just a little bit when you see that picture? Um, that, that was the kind of enthusiasm that he had when he, heard, when, when he heard loud music. The louder, the better. He loved the pipe organ. He loved when his siblings would uh, play music in their home. He loved sitting next to me while I was playing the piano. He, sometimes they would, uh, his parents, Dan and Bridget, would bring him to my parents' house and sit me next to their piano, uh, to sit, the, he, yeah, sit him next to the piano that I played when I was growing up, and I would play as loud as I possibly could for as long as I possibly could because to, to, to play enough to get, uh, to get uh, Jack to, to react to it took a lot of energy because you really had to pound. <laughs> but um, but he, he was, he was nonverbal, but his joy was expressed in sounds that words could never touch, right? He, you, it was so obvious when he, when he was so excited. He, he just loved, uh, he just loved music and loved playing on his iPad and loved hearing it in any way that he could. Um, so then, uh, then he died, and there was a huge void in the life of the whole congregation because everybody really felt the loss of, of Jack. And so it, was, it came time to sort of figure out, okay, how are we going to honor this boy's life? How are we, gonna, how are we going to remember him well and, 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 and remember him in our hearts and carry him with us in, in our lives? So if you go to the next slide, so this is called the music garden. Uh, if you go to the Chola Center in Ripon, uh, one of our UCCI camps, um, you, will, you will see a, a, a very colorful music garden with various outdoor instruments. And um, this, was, this is actually at Moon Beach um, because there, there are lots of family camps at Moon Beach that, uh, that Jack and his family went to. And for a while, they didn't have a music garden, and Jack's brother Henry was a, a Boy Scout, and so it, it got to the point that he was doing his Eagle Scout project. And Henry decided that the focus of his Eagle Scout project should be in memory of his, his brother Jack. And so he spearheaded the creation and the, the implementation of this music garden. And they've since moved to Michigan, and they didn't actually get to see it finished, so I took a picture when I was there back in October uh, so that they could see the, the completed music garden. Uh, it's a little bit small, so if you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five or six different instruments in there. And... and uh, that is dedicated in memory of Jack. Uh, and, and so his spirit lives on in Moon, at Moon Beach through this music garden and all of the people who play it. And I, and I bet that they probably play it pretty loud. And I bet that they probably play it in this huge sort of cacophony of sound that he just would have loved. And uh, it, it was just, it's just a beautiful way to remember the, the legacy and the life of this beautiful, beautiful boy. Um, so Jesus, in our text today, is also remembering a friend. Uh, and, and it takes him a while to sort of process his death. Right? He waits four whole days before he shows up at the burial site of his friend Lazarus. And uh, 
I bet that he was probably sort of figuring it out himself. And he also knew that the Jewish opposition was out to get him. And so the 17 verses that I lopped off of the lectionary today were basically his disciples saying, he, he, he says to his disciples, let's go back. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. And his disciples say, what the heck? They're out to kill you and you're, you're going to go back? And Jesus decides that it's worth the risk. Jesus decides that it's worth the risk because he wants to go to Martha and Mary and all of Lazarus' family and friends and, and be, be with them and remember him. But he wants to do something a little bit different too. So, so um, I'll, I'll get to that. But first, he's on his way. And when he finally gets there, he sees that there are Jews with Mary and, and Martha. And this, this is why he gets angry, because he probably thinks that maybe they're, they're about to go tell on him. They're about to go, they're, they're maybe spies or something, and like sort of fake consoling the family. And so this is why he angrily says to the Jews, where did you put him? What did you do? And, uh, and, he goes, and they go, come and see. Um, so even if some of these Jews really were consoling Martha and Mary, uh, Jesus is ever mindful of the opposition that is out to get him. So when he has processed and when he's been angry and when he's sort of collected himself, he starts to cry. He starts to weep. And there are only a few times in the Bible that we know for sure that Jesus wept. This time was one. Uh, he weeps over Jerusalem when Jerusalem has fallen away from the ways of God. And he, I think he weeps in the Garden of Gethsemane as well. But uh, we don't know for sure of any other times. But this is, this is, this is particular that, that he weeps at this time. And I bet... I bet he wept when Jack died, too. I bet he did. Because um, I think I, I, you know, Jack, was, Jack was so, so special, and I think, I, think, I think Jesus did, too. Um, but after he does all that, his whole project becomes helping Mary and Martha believe. He says, your brother will be raised up. And... Sometimes when we hear something like that, uh, we, we hear people say, oh, you'll see him again. You'll see her again. You'll see them again. When people try to comfort us when we're grieving a loss. And it's sort of shallow comfort sometimes, right? We, we say, yeah, I, I know. I'll see, I'll see him again. I'll see her again. I'll see them again. But I really wish they were still here now. I really wish they were still here now. And, uh, and Jesus says, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't have to wait for the end. Because I, right now, am the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in me doesn't really die at all. Whoever believes in me will still live on even after they die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And Martha says, yes, I, I do. I know, I know that I know that you are, you are special and you are somebody that does things that other people can't do. So, so I believe you, Jesus. And so Jesus shows Martha what he means. And he doesn't do the easy thing. As, as Melinda Quivick, who's a liturgical and homiletical scholar, will remind us, he doesn't do the easy thing. People say, well, he could have probably prevented Lazarus from dying. Why didn't he just do that? 
He healed a blind man, as we discovered last week. He, he, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Why didn't he do this? this? This could have been easy for him, right? But he doesn't do the easy thing. Jesus does the hard thing. He doesn't, make, he doesn't prevent bad things from happening. But he reverses destruction and despair and sadness and hopelessness into something that will help others see the glory of God. So what does resurrection actually mean? My opinion or my sort of thought process behind it as I've been thinking this week has been that resurrection is the revolutionary act of creating meaning and hope out of despair and longing. So Jack may not have experienced a literal resurrection, but I think that his resurrection spiritually has to do with this music garden. His life, his legacy, his essence, his enthusiasm lives on through the Eagle Scout project, through the music garden. And there are many different ways we can see spiritual resurrections all the time. And in this church, not just, not the wider church, I'm talking right here, right now, We've seen lots of different resurrections over the last couple of years. We've come out of COVID and we've, we've, been able to, we've been able to continue certain things, but also learn in different ways. What have we learned? We've, we've made worship more accessible through things like Zoom and YouTube and the other things that we've tried. And we've also been reinvigorating some old partnerships that we have with area churches. We're, we're working with the Wapan Methodist Church for Holy Week. We're doing the Lenten series in Fond du Lac. And uh, that was something that hadn't happened for a little while. And I've also been told that there's been some new energy here over the last several months that hasn't been the case since before COVID. So how do we take that with us? How do, what do we do now? So we may not experience physical resurrections like Lazarus. But we can be a part of the new thing, the new chapter that God is writing for the church. Now it may not look the same as what it looked like when you grew up or when you grew up, or when I grew up. But there's such an opportunity here to do something beautiful, to participate in what God is doing in the world. And because we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe that death does not have to have the final word, that despair, that destruction, that hopelessness does not have to have the final word. Because we believe that through Jesus Christ, things can be turned around in revolutionary and unexpected ways. So let us be part of that resurrection. Let's be mindful of the resurrections we find in our lives every day and the opportunities to do something new and different and wonderful and beautiful and powerful through that work. Because Jesus Christ offers us the opportunity to experience things in a different way and to see the glory of God. Let's be part of it. Thanks be to God. Amen. And please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in our next hymn, number 515, Hymn of Promise.
Amen. You may be seated. Now we enter into a time of more focused prayer. I invite you to take a deep breath with me as we consider the people and situations who are in need of our prayers and our intentions today. Let's breathe together. I invite your continued prayers for my family as we grieve the loss of Keith. Uh, he leaves behind his wife Julie, his son Isaac, his parents Jeff and Barb, uh, and his, his sister Michelle and her family, and uh, as well as so many others. Uh, I have a big extended family, so, so um, prayers for all of them that, the, that they may uh, find God's presence in their grief and hope in, uh, in the promise of uh, being in Christ with, with him. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, I ask for continued prayers for um, Roy and Shirley Williams uh, as, as Roy uh, continues to deal with his uh, medical concerns. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, trying to th I, um, what else do we have today? I can't think of anything else right now. Oh, yes. My cousin and his family after the death of his wife. Mm. And uh, what was, what was his, her name? Rita. Rita. We for, for her yes. Right, right, right. For um, uh, Lori and Rick, uh, ask for prayers for uh, for the family of Rita, uh, who for whom we had prayed before. Uh, Rita just died this week. So for all who uh, all who love Rita, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. What else today? Yes, Winnie. Yeah. I'm thinking of Roy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know what happened with Jean McKim, um, she fell and broke her hip um, last week. And, um, and she, she is in rehab at the Christian home right now. So let's, let's, be, um, let's be mindful of, of, of Jean because um, the, uh, a hip injury is especially scary for somebody her age. So uh, for Jean, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. What else today? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, Rick Van Hoff is having hand surgery tomorrow. So uh, for, for, the, for the medical team and for, uh, for Rick and, and for Lori as, as, <laughs> as Rick recovers. <laughs> for all of that, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uh, anything else today? Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah. She's been here in the United States, mm. um, and she just had, about two months ago, she just had surgery at Duke University, so she's been recovering um, here in the States and is doing fantastic, and her husband came uh, yesterday from Germany, so mm. they've been apart for quite a while, Oh and wow. she is just overjoyed that he's here, and they're flying back to Germany tomorrow, and it's just been such a blessing. She is pain pretty much pain free she can move she can exercise wow. and it's just it's been a long battle and so we're just so and she's such a christian um she's never lost her faith during mm. this whole unfortunate journey wow. and so we're just thrilled for her to be able to go back to where she wants to live in germany and just be able to get back to her life. yeah and she's just had a lot of really wonderful support so we're just wow thrilled that, you know she's on on the up and up now and wonderful yeah Wonderful, and 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 Kathy, what's what's her what's her name, Michelle. and her and Michelle and her relation to you? This is uh, my husband Derek. It's his cousin. Derek's cousin for um, for Derek's cousin Michelle and and for for um, uh, a, a prayer of joy and thanksgiving for um, for 
re- recuperation in a remarkable situation. God in your mercy, receive our prayers. Uh, what else today? Oh, yes, Heather. Hooray! Happy birthday, David. And he passed his boards a few weeks ago. Woo! <laughs> so celebrating, uh, celebrating the wonderful person that David is, and also that, uh, that he passed his, his NCLEX um, exam, um, which um, if, any of you, if any of you have nurses in your life, you know how difficult and arduous that task is. Uh, so, uh, so prayers for, prayers for David, uh, prayers of, of joy and thanksgiving for David Vanderkin uh, since he passed his nursing exam. And now he wants to find a job. So, <laughs> so, um, so if, if you know any, uh, if you know anyone looking, uh, go, um, you know, uh, uh, Send him David's way, because David's great. We all love David, right? So, uh, so uh, for, for David, God and your mercy, receive our prayers. Anything else today? Do I see a hand? Yes, sorry. Wow. For and and his name, Rick. 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 For 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 Rick as he's um, as he's dealing with um, heart failure and and the, what was the other thing? Leukemia. Leukemia. Uh, for 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 uh, for all of the all of the journey in this difficult space for Rick. God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Anything else today? Anything on Zoom, Alana? Okay. Then let's join, um, let's join in a time of silent prayer. So I'm going to say a pastoral prayer, and then, I invite, and then I'm going to invite us in to the Lord's Prayer. We use debts and debtors language, but uh, if, if you have a different translation of the Lord's Prayer that, that uh, f- feels more prayerful to you or speaks more deeply to your heart, uh, please be welcome to, to use that. Um, let's pray together. Good and gracious God, I give you thanks for this opportunity to be together and to be in prayer for one another through the many joys and concerns we have spoken and the many things that live in our hearts. There are many people and situations in need of your presence and your love and your power uh, to be with them. We ask that uh, you uh, provide that presence and that love where it's needed the most. We give you thanks that in the midst of our deepest despair and longing and hopelessness that you give us opportunities to see hope every day and to see new opportunities every day. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ who showed us new opportunities in every situation and who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now the time has come to offer our gifts back to God. We give thanks for all gifts that are uh, brought to Union Congregational Church through time, talent, treasure, and prayer. Please give generously as your heart and spirit allow.
rise if it's comfortable for you to do so. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly join me in the prayer of dedication. Loving Creator, you accompany us in grief and encourage us with opportunities for new life. With these gifts, may we be opened to the new things you are doing in the midst of grief, even when we don't perceive it. Amen. Now, uh, please join us in our closing hymn. This is number 716, God be with you till we meet again. My friends, receive these words of benediction. We know that there is grief. We know that there is hopelessness. And we know that there is despair. But we also know that Jesus gives us opportunities to receive new understandings of the glory of God. So go as you leave from this place, knowing the resurrections that are all around you and go be part of it. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.